Dobro večer svima i dobrodošli na predstavljanje knjige Muze izgubljenih ljubavi Gerija Barkera. Molim vas za početak jedan veliki pljesak za našeg autora koji sjedi tu u prvom redu. Na kanalu 1 je hrvatski, na kanalu 2 je engleski, a prevodi vam Hrvoja Hefer. Možete joj zapljeskati odmah, a možete i kasnije zaslužuje pljesak sasvim svima. Prije nego što ću razgovarati sa Gerijem, kojeg ovako familiarno zovem Geri, jer smo prijatelji, zamolit ću da dođe Judit, čije ću prezime ipak morat pročitati, u Iterlinde. Judit je urednica, internacionalna engleska urednica Gerijeve knjige. Judit, could you please come and tell a few words? I veliki desak za Judit, naravno. Okay, since Judith doesn't have her headphones on, I will ask her a question in English. Relax and there's a moment of relaxation for you. Well, this book is published at the same time in Croatian and in English. How come, can you tell us a story about that synergy? Yes, we thought it would be a great idea because it's a very international oriented novel taking place in different different places in the, in the world. Uh, Gary will talk about that later. So we thought it would be great to have an international uh, launch. So I'm, I'm extremely happy that it worked out uh, and that we are all together here now. And uh, well, we cheated a little bit because the uh, US edition uh, came out um, last month and Gary already did a presentation in Washington in a bookshop because he couldn't be at three different places at the same time. We've been breaking our head about how to do that simultaneously. So we cheated a little, little bit and in Washington there was a beautiful uh, launch and, uh, and then last week in the UK, in London, uh, uh, he had a, a great uh, uh, launch too at a bookshop and uh, there's been quite a few um, yeah, good reviews and reactions uh, in, the, in the UK and US press already, so I'm, we're really excited uh, about that. Uh, why do you think this book is important? And do you think that people in Croatia will read it in a different way than people in the States or in England? Well, of course, it's it's very special for people here that the museum is here in Zagreb, and that's why it's so great to have this event here because uh, the the book is inspired on uh, a visit uh, uh, of the, a couple here uh, to the Zag to the Museum of Broken Relationships and the whole concept. But I'm not going to talk about that because that's up to you. Uh, centers around yeah the idea of of, of broken relationships. Um, yeah. Uh, and, but you didn't answer the, the second part, uh, the audience. Uh, do you think that, that people in, in the States will understand it in the same way we in Croatia understand the book? Well, yes, I think so, because it's, in the end it's about relationships and that's a very universal thing. So everybody falls in and out of love and that's everywhere in the world in, uh, that happens in whatever situation you're in. So I think this book can appeal to anybody uh, in any country. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't think there's a big difference uh, apart from the fact that you have this extra of the museum. Uh, for example, I just saw that there's national television. We could only dream of having national television <laughs> in, uh, in, in the US or the UK. So there's a little difference there. But <laughs> Uh, Judy, thank you so much and thank you for the opportunity. Thank you so much for having me here. And now, Gary, could you please uh, uh, take your place? Hey, I'm going to go back to Croatian. And Hrvoja is watching me and Gary is listening and you listen and you enjoy it. So, Gary, good evening and welcome again to the museum. Um, hajdemo odmah na... Do, do you hear the translation? Turning it up a little bit. Okay. okay. Can you hear it? Uh, hajdemo odmah uh, na početak. Na, naravno, logično je početi s početkom. Uh, dakle, inspiracija za ovu knjigu, kao što je već rečeno nekoliko puta, uh, je bio ovaj muzej u čijem kafeu sada sjedimo, muzej prekinutih veza u Zagrebu. Uh, možeš li se sjetiti 
tog trenutka kada si ušetao u muzej i kada si vidio nekoliko izložaka ili neki konkretan izložak i odlučio da, ovo je dobar poticaj, ja želim pisati roman o ovome ili roman potaknut ovime. I came to this region the first time in 2006 uh, partnership with some colleagues who are here working um, with young men in the backdrop of the years of conflict and I had also taken a long trip that went from Banja Luka to Sarajevo by road and seen some of the effects of the conflict and then ended up here and when I heard the it, it's very strange when you walk down and see the names of all the museums so there's a cathedral and there's this and then you read the name of a museum that says Museum of Broken Relationships that's a very strange name for a museum next to the Museum of City of Zagreb and the rest. So I had, I mean, just the title was evocative and had the many stories of the young men telling their stories of the backdrop of the war here. I lived in Brazil at the time where my organization works on young people affected by the violence in some of Rio de Janeiro's most violent neighborhoods. And so coming in to the museum and going, interesting, where is this going to go? And you, when I came in that time, as you turn the first corner, there's the first thing that was there was an ax. And as you think about broken relationships and men and how men don't deal well with broken relationships, that was like, got, you know, there was like this constriction of my veins <laughs> of feeling, where is this story going to go? It turned out to be quite a funny one and no one was harmed except for some furniture. Um, but it nonetheless got me of just this single image and a couple of sentences, just how universal those were. And with all those other stories in my head, as I walked around more in the museum, I said, oh, I know where I can put violence from Texas in the United States, and I know where I can put a story from Brazil. And, you know, there's going to be several stories from the former Yugoslavia in here. Yeah, and then, then it kind of started. Osim te sjekire, koji ti se izložak najviše usjekao u sjećanje? There's one that is not here anymore. I looked the other day and it's a, also from afar you look at it and it's a jar of completely um, stripped olive pits, the olive seeds. I don't know if anyone else saw that one or remembers it, but I thought, what, what about a loved one would make you think of olive pits? And it was a woman describing many of the stories, not surprisingly, of, um, of women writing about men who have not broken up very well. Um, and I thought, what, what does an olive pit doing in this room? Um, and it was a woman describing just in detail of how she fell in love with his mouth and the way that he was able to strip an olive down to nothing. And described it in just very sensual words. And then the next paragraph is, and then I found out he had another family <laughs> and a partner and all the rest. And so each one of, you know, I just felt kind of each one of them just went, kind of lulled into it and then boom. Um, so that was the other one that was taking me to the room and the next room and the next room. Sada možemo i malo konkretno o romanu koji isto ima ovaj moment, sve je lijepo i onda u nekom trenutku ide boom. Kada bi mene netko pitao da definiram ovaj roman, ja bih rekao da je to ljubavni roman, ali možda i više od toga roman o potrazi za ljubavi i za ljubavlju ili o borbi za ljubav. Je li to neka definicija s kojom bi se mogao složiti? Kako ti vidiš svoj vlastiti roman sada kada je on postao i knjiga, kada nije više samo u tom računalu? Yeah, I mean, I it, define it as about love as long as it's not a Hollywood ending. So <laughs> I, I don't want anyone to have this illusion that somehow at the end of it, it is not all about sadness, but it also doesn't have um, sort of a love actually soundtrack to it at the very end. I think it's about, as this museum is, about the love that's possible and the multiple forms of it. Um, and if anything, kind of the universality of um, to love, you will have to sort of, what's the right word, practice, learn, have your heart broken a few times before you may find love. Um, so, yeah, maybe it's, maybe I'd call it love possible, um, rather than love actually, if you make me give it up, um, define it against other, although I love love actually as well, just to, just to define it.
Um, and my wife is here, and our daughter makes me watch it at least once every Christmas season, if not, <laughs> if not more. So I love that too, but don't, conf yeah, just as long as a reader doesn't feel like you promised me love actually, and it's, and it's love possibly. U romanu pratimo priču dva uvjetno rečeno glavna ljubavna para, ali kao što si ti sam rekao, to nije roman samo o romantičnoj ljubavi, nego je roman i o roditeljskoj ljubavi i o prijateljskoj ljubavi, dakle tu imamo čitav niz ljubavi, a i ta dva romantična para sa sobom naravno nose neku prtljagu koja utječe na njihovo ponašanje, o tome ćemo možda reći nešto kasnije. I to je roman o gubitku ljubavi također. Ono što me zanima je kako si se odlučio pisati o tako delikatnoj temi kao što je ljubav i gubitak ljubavi i je li te bilo strah da ćeš u nekom trenu skliznuti u patetiku ili u melodramu? Nisi skliznuo, moram odmah reći, zaista nije patetična knjiga ni malo i svaka čast na tome. No je li postojao taj strah s obzirom na delikatnost, na osjetljivost te teme? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, to write, to, to step into one, the museum itself is so articulate. I mean, individuals writing about their own stories. What I worried of whether mine would seem fake compared to the real stories that are told around the corner. So that was weighing very much in my head around, does this ring as true? Um, and I, you know, I suppose the other, in you know, my career has been around working with men around violence prevention and the reaction of men to violence, including some work with men who have used violence against female partners, against their wives or girlfriends. And one of, you know, often a constant there is just how challenging breakups and men finding both an authentic voice and finding a way to be connected and caring. And so to me, it, I, I had lots of stories in my head um, like that and women affected by them, not only, and men are not the only ones who break up badly and cause other people to have heartache, but I had a lot of those stories in my head. Um, if anything, and you did some colleagues work with me, we cut some stuff out. <laughs> There's, um, you know, there, there are a lot of stories, and I think because it's so universal, and I was able to bring a lot of my international um, work around this with you know, real life individuals who have experienced this, So I think between the museum and those stories and my own, um, which we can talk about later, or my partner can, <laughs> here can, um, or not, around, yeah, just, you know, love as a, as a daily verb. It's not like, you know, it's the, um, it's not like, you know, it's done. Um, I think considering, you know, relationships and love is not one, you know, one thing that you've sort of figured out or you're learning as a checklist. Um, I hope that complexity comes through. Gerim je u stvari odgovorio na pitanje koje mu nisam ni postavio, a to je jesu li priče o izložcima, dakle osim radnje, u romanu postoji priče o izložcima u Muzeju prekinutih veza, koje su, evo sada sam doznao, izmišljene i svaka čast na tome, jer one zaista se čine, zaista se čine kao stvarne. Ali vratimo se još malo na roman, spomenuo si i obiteljsko nasilje. U romanu postoji neke scene koji dakle u hollywoodskim filmovima o ljubavi vjerojatno ne bi bilo. Je li te bilo strah da će takav pristup možda otkriti dvije čitatelja koji kada se govori o ljubavnom romanu ipak očekuju latice ruža, pjenušac i rozu boju? Ja mislim da je 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 will experience some violence from a man, most often a male partner. The fact that we don't talk more about it is one of the reasons that it keeps happening so much. Um, and I think we often, um, I think the, you know, the, the negative part I'm critiquing Hollywood about is that we pretend that somehow relationships always end in some neat ways, or violence portrays the violent man as this beast. Um, as opposed to understanding this, all of us know someone who this has happened to. And so I guess I felt when, and I did have one critic say, oh, you know, is this writer using violence in a gratuitous way? Um, I felt that if you want to talk about relationships, male, female, straight, or, or otherwise, and didn't include violence, and, and I pretend to try to talk about violence across many settings, it would feel fake if it didn't include it. Um, so I hope the stories 
feel they're there because this is what we as humans do to each other. Um, but also trying to show both the survivors of that violence and the men who use it as complex human beings. Um, so yeah, I, I, to me it felt like it had to tell that story, but I hope that the individuals don't come across as monstrous or any of the survivors as somehow they melted because of their resilience, just as those who use violence are very complex individuals. Um, so I hope that comes through. But yes, you should go into it knowing there are stories of violence in here. I hope I don't think they're graphic. I think they're as much as you need to know to feel some of the impact of them. Uh, jedna od tema koja se provlači kroz roman je i uh, raspad Jugoslavije, odnosno rat u, u bivšoj Jugoslaviji. Uh, mene je u stvari iznenadilo uh, kako je pisac uh, koji je amerikanac, uh, kako je nekako točno shvatio situaciju, naravno pročitao sam niz knjiga uh, autora koji nisu odavde, koji su pisali o tome, neki tu vrlo kompleksnu situaciju uh, su shvatili bolje, neki malo slabije, Uh, u tvom pisanju je uh, ona jako točno i precizno ocetana, uh, pa me zanima koliko je tu bilo potrebno istraživanja, koliko je, koliko je utrošeno vremena u to da se, da se ta situacija shvati i na koncu onda da se ona tako uh, čistim i preciznim jezikom i prenese u tekst. Yeah, I mean, I, I, uh, I didn't set out necessarily to do research specifically for the book, but as luck would have it, um, I met both Bosnian and Serbian immigrants to the US. I did my PhD in Chicago, and probably the second largest former Yugoslavian city is Chicago, if I'm not mistaken, if not. Um, a lot of immigrants there. And then also through work here, when I um, had the chance to come here first in 2006, the work was specifically around um, a group of, well, organizations, CARE, and some others doing work on this topic, um, Status M here in Zagreb, NGOs working on violence prevention and promoting healthy masculinities. And in the context of that work, met some amazing folks, including that co host here on the second row, Natasha, who we had the chance to work with some research on, um, Zavritska from CARE, had the chance to, to meet, and we, it was in the course of work that I just asked lots of questions and you all were endlessly patient about, and why this, and when did this happen? And Natko's probably answered more questions about this region that he then sends me like 12 blogs of you should look this and watch the death of Yugoslavia and read this book. So I've had um, some amazing uh, time and really thoughtful colleagues who were willing to share their own personal stories as well as point me to you must read this or you don't understand anything about our country. Um, and then. I, in, in my terms, coming from California and Texas, it feels small, so I've been able to be to a lot of corners of the country from, well, or the former country from Pristina, you know, up all the way to, to the border with Slovenia, so it feels like I've also had the chance to see a lot of the countryside. Um, and every, I mean, there's more stories to be told <laughs> about this region. Kada smo, kada smo kod regije, dakle, jedan lik u romanu, e, Goran, je iz, e, iz Bosne, e, ali tu se nekako želim malo više vratiti na pitanje identiteta, koje je također jedno od pitanja e, kojim, se, e, kojim se baviš u romanu. Dakle, imamo Gorana, ja vam neću prepričavati radnju, samo ću naznačiti neke stvari da vam ne spojlam, kako se to lijepo kaže na hrvatskom. E, dakle, imamo e, Gorana koji je za vrijeme rata iz Bosne pobjegao u Ameriku e, i na neki način pokušava naći svoje korijene. E, imamo Katju koja ne zna tko su njezini biološki roditelji i također u nekom trenutku e, pokušava se suočiti sa tom obiteljskom prošlošću. E, ono što mene zanima je e, znamo, li, e, znamo li mi e, koliko naša prošlost utječe na ono što smo danas, e, jesmo li toga svjesni, koliko koliko nas, koliko naš identitet gradi i ono što je, što je bilo, jesu li toga svjesni likovi u romanu i jesu li toga svjesni mi u stvarnom životu? Yeah. Um, I'm a developmental psychologist with my uh, doctoral training and so part of what we look at and believe is that yes, our past shapes who we are here <laughs> and our, our, you know, getting to be... Mike. Oops, sorry. And getting to be better, sorry, that I'm a developmental psychologist by training, and so that field is around how our early childhood in particular affects who we become. And not in a 
predictive or easily predictive way, but that we carry it with us. And, um, and then I happen to be partnered with, among other things, a clinical psychologist who is my wife, and so a lot of thinking about how that happens to us. And then my, uh, I have two adopted siblings. My brother and sister are both adopted and very challenging early childhood situations. And so um, I think that piece of early childhood and how that affects us, um, my, well, my nuclear family, my part partner is Brazilian, our daughter is from two countries, a discussion of who you are, what's American, what's Brazilian, who are we in the world, is kind of a common uh, dinner table conversation. <laughs> so <laughs> there's no choice but that identity had to be in there. <laughs> um, and I think it's not, yeah, it's, it's an it's a issue that walks with those of us, and I think this region deals a lot with who are you. Um, are you, you know, formerly Yugoslavian, are you Croatian, are you European, are you something else? Um, all those things, I think, sit in our heads a long time. Roman ima rijetku kvalitetu da zaista likovi kada počnete čitati knjigu, doživljavate ih kao stvarne osobe, naravno, to svaki tisac pokušava postići, ali ne uspije baš svima, ne pođe baš svima za rukom. U tom smislu bih htio pitati, jesu li ti, bez namjere da ulazimo u neke autobiografske detalje ako postoje, iako evo sada si rekao svoju situaciju koju u nekim mikro momentima prepoznajem u knjizi, koliko su likovi inspirirani osobama iz stvarnog života, kako su ih uspio učiniti toliko živima, toliko životnima? Mm, yeah, I mean, I'm glad they come alive. That's a that's like the best compliment we can yeah. <laughs> have as a writer. And I, I suppose um, I'm working many years with Judith, who's been well before she was the publisher for World Editions, was my agent and kind of first editor, if I may. Um, was you know reading authors who did that for me. I could hear their characters like getting up and making a cup of tea for me and sitting in front of me. Um, I, yeah, to to me. I, I don't start a story until some of the characters feel that real. Um, I don't think there's any in the story that are that autobiographical, but there are lots of people who I've, they're, they're a, kind of a, an amalgamation or a mixture of a lot of those people. Um, none of, you know, Gorn is not any of, directly any of the colleagues I've worked with here, but there's a lot of them in him. Um, he also happens to do his PhD in masculinity studies. I, who I, you know, someone like me who studies masculinity. Um, Katya could be, you know, some colleagues, but not. Um, the police officer could be a friend of mine who I knew in secondary school who was a deputy sheriff, but not. So yeah, there's a little bit of, but, but no one exactly, yeah. Um, je li jedan od ciljeva romana ili ideja romana ili ciljeva romana ako roman uopće može imati uh, cilj uh, da se uh, da nešto naučimo iz uh, tuđih iskustava iz tuđih priča uh, i mogu li ljudi uopće učiti iz uh, uh, jesmo li mi kao ljudska bića uopće sposobni učiti uh, iz tuđih iskustava ne ponoviti neće tuđe greške yeah. I mean, I think, you know, good fiction is about empathy building, um, <laughs> which is why I worry, and I don't mean to slam other kinds of fiction, but I worry that men in particular, at least in the U.S., I don't know in this country, are reading a lot less literary fiction, um, and actually reading a lot less fiction. Um, not that good TV can't do that, and good films and all the rest, but um, yeah, I think good, that's what good, um, to me, literary fiction does is it's a it's an act of empathy, both on the writer, but also on the individual reading it. Um, and there is at some moment when you're kind of I, I know that person, and I and as a writer I think that it's getting there when I feel Tyler is a real person. He's like in the room with me and we're having a conversation almost. Um, if I if that come across to the reader, then then yes, we've answered your question that we've achieved empathy and connection and maybe exercised our empathy muscle um, that I think in particular I have a cause of trying to get men to do that even more because I think too much around manhood and around the world tries to squeeze that out of us. Um, so I hope it does that. I don't have any illusions <laughs> as to how much it can, but I hope it does that. Uh, 
Da, u jednom, u jednom intervju si rekao da bi volio da više muškaraca pročita ovu knjigu. Misliš li da će se to dogoditi? Misliš li da će ona doći do svojih muških čitatelja? Um, I don't know what do we think the wedding dress is going to get some men's attention. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I would have had to put an airplane or maybe a jet or a rocket on the fire. I don't know. I don't want to oversimplify as well. There's a lot of men who do who do read. Um, I hope in, in pieces like that in the Irish Times or some blogs that maybe some men will want to. Interestingly, after that piece came out in the Irish Times, I received two emails from men talking about their breakups and how they found it interesting that I was talking about how men don't talk about breakups. Um, so, maybe. Two is great. Yeah. Two is, well, I'm three, so. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Say it's four, so it is four. Matt has read it twice, I think, different versions, so he counts as two or three. So yeah, we're, we're in the roll. All the other men here, you're gonna buy several copies and give it to your fathers, your brothers, Women can buy the books and conveniently place them next to sporting goods, you know, tennis shoes, whatever you need, whatever works. When we talk about this, you often mention the syntagm of healthy masculinity, that is what you do on what you do. Can you describe what this would be in the 21st century? What would be healthy healthy masculinity? I'll look to Natko to help me on that one. Um, it's sometimes easier to define what it's not. <laughs> yeah. But I, I think we mean men who are not afraid to show vulnerability. Um, there's an, actually an amazing uh, British writer and artist, Grayson Perry, I'm not sure if you've heard of him, who has a book called The Descent of, Ma the Descent of Man, as in men on a downhill. And he, um, I think, aspires well with the, he says, men should sit down for their rights and then he lists those rights. And they're the right to be wrong, the right to be vulnerable, the right to be uncertain, um, and I would add to that the right to care deeply, the right to love in out of control ways, not out of control in the bad way, but out of control in good ways. The right to care for ourselves, the right to seek help when we need it, the right to ask for directions when we don't know where we're going, um, the right to, yeah, admit when we might not have all the answers, um, those, yes, I guess to me would be some of the things I think healthy masculinity would be. And it, it exists. Um, and, and we're kind of affirming it so that it speaks more loudly than harmful ideas around, around manhood, which um, you don't have to look very far in my country or my second home country or lots of other countries to see how much that's uh, reigning in the world today in our some leaders, shall we say, without naming names. <laughs> Uh, možemo se još malo vratiti, uh, vratiti na roman i na još jedan, uh, na još jedan sloj romana, um, a taj sloj je roditeljska ljubav. Uh, uh, rekli smo da, uh, da se različite vrste, različiti tipovi ljubavi pojavljuju u romanu. Uh, dakle, imamo Goran uh, se nakon dugo vremena vraća u Bosnu, susreće svog oca koji, kojeg za njega jednostavno više nije briga. Uh, imamo jednu majku koja ostavlja svoje djete, imamo um, jednu, jednu djeka koja je dakle posvojen. Uh, imamo niz ljudi koji imaju tako uh, uvjetno rečeno nesređene roditeljske ili obiteljske situacije. Um, ono što mene zanima je koliko je važno uh, kao djete primiti roditeljsku ljubav da bi pojedinac izrastao u osobu koja će se kasnije moći uh, pošteno dati u nekom, u nekom svom odnosu. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, as a developmental psychologist, our kind of, our one big truth is that um, you need, as you're growing up, at least one adult who is crazy about you. And, you know, it's, it, I'd rather use that as a definition than any of the technical words we use about attachment and, and early internalization of a healthy relationship. It is really at least one adult who puts your interests above theirs. I mean, that is kind of the definition of what you need to thrive. And we know from, say, Romanian orphanages or other part, or in World War II, when there was some belief that children in orphanages shouldn't have an attachment, you should not touch them. And children who weren't touched and weren't loved by whoever had extreme and almost irremedial developmental challenges. 
So if anything we know is that children need from early on just somebody who is absolutely crazy about them. That can be one, that can be two, you know, would you be so lucky as to have three? And if that's broken when you're a young child, it's not that you can't learn how to love, but it becomes really tough. And it's not only love, it's how to be confident, it's how to feel comfortable in your own skin. Um, yeah, that should be, you know, I think the book sort of says that without giving you a lecture in developmental psychology. <laughs> But we seem to forget that in terms of you know, just how important those early moments with our children um, are. But I think there's also a moment of hope in the story. Of, I won't give it away, but there's moments of attachments and parental love re-found maybe along the way. U jednoj od uh, kritika romana uh, je napisano da je ovo roman koji je, svidio mi se to, zato citiram, koji je roman koji je o oružanim i još više o neoružanim sukobima. Um, je li u svakom odnosu, u, u svakom ljubavnom odnosu, uh, je li svaki ljubavni odnos na jednoj razini i sukob? Sluf. We're not doing therapy here. Right? And my partner is in the room. So, yeah. But... Um, Yeah, I think, you know, it, it is important. I don't know in, you know, maybe just a little bit of autobiography. I don't know that I learned very well with my parents how to. I learned lots of things with them, but they did kind of most any argument sort of behind closed doors. And I think it's a really important, while that was good at one level, it also means that you can feel really uncertain about, you know, oh, a conflict means we're, we're over, or this relationship can't work, or learning how to fight in the good way of that inner relationship, I think is an absolute necessity um, in terms of how we, yeah, how we argue and um, argue to stay together. We might also argue that it's not healthy for us to be together. But I think learning how to, whatever the right verb is, is it fight, is it argue, assert, I don't know what the, the right word is, I think is, is also as fundamental um, as, yeah, as many other things that we should teach our children growing up, I guess. Uh, još jedna od stvari koja mi se čini važna, uh, važna za ovaj roman je uh, ono što se uči iz nje ili, što, ili na što nas on podsjeća je da uh, svaki, ovo u stvari neće biti pitanje, ovo će biti, ovo će biti teza za koju očekujem da mi kažeš da. Uh, da, uh, da svaki ljubavni odnos uh, u sebi posjeduje neku uh, univerzalnu prepoznatljivost Uh, odnosno neku kvalitetu s kojom se svi možemo poistovjetiti, ali da je istovremeno i toliko specifičan da, je, uh, da ima nešto što, je, što se može primijeniti samo na taj konkretan par. Uh, je li to istina? <laughs> može, može i više od samo da ili ne. <laughs> can I, can I answer that one? Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think that is part of the The, the moment that we call, you know, being in love with something about, you know, you see something in me that no one else in the world does, and I think I see something in you that no one else in the world does. That's, that's part of the illusion of romantic love. And I call it illusion, but it's a really, it's a great illusion, right? That, and some will say, my soulmate, and I could only be with you. And I do think for that moment, and for many moments that we carry ahead, and for whatever that turns into as a love story, that moment is really crucial. Um, to believe that, yeah, there is something you see in me that no one else does, um, and I, looking at you, see myself in a different way than no one else does. I mean, that's just, you know, like, if you haven't had that, you, you need to at some point in your life. It's just, it, that is an amazing experience. We go on from other things and have other things that are amazing that come from that, but yes, I think that's, I think that's a universal. Is, is that a universal? I don't, I don't know. I can only think from my own stories there, but... I, i think you're saying you think it is too, so we'll go, I'll go with yes, it's universal. <laughs> If you said it is, and I said it is, then yeah, yeah it's yeah. universal. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, jo, uh, polako se primit ćemo kraju, uh, nisam čitao tvoje, o, tvoje ostale romane, ali sad ću svakako to učiniti nakon čitanja, uh, nakon čitanja ove knjige. Uh, zanima me gdje je mjesto uh, ovom romanu u, u tvom ukupnom dijelu, koliko je on sličan onome što si pisao prije, odnosno gdje su dodirne točke, a gdje su, po čemu se razlikuje od ostalih romana koje si napisao? Um, hmm. 
I'd almost want somebody else to, to look at them and compare. I think this one is, um, it builds a lot on them, and maybe each of them has been similar themes, but kind of one setting, or at least two, not 12 like this one has, or six like this one has. And just as a clue, if you want to you know, buy my whole set of works, there's a, there are, there are in the letters and the objects of love, there are actually references to the previous books. So there's actually a summary. And I, well, I can tell you, the one from Guatemala and the one from Congo are actually from two of the previous novels. And so I think that tells you they fit in there just so well because they're kind of similar themes going on of the effect of conflict and displacement in our early stories, um, how we find our ways in and out of love, how we recover who we find around us to help us recover. So there's similar stories there. Um, they're not just repeated stories, but you'll find some, um, whatever the reviewer that said armed and unarmed conflict are kind of constant themes in, in my previous works. Uh, with the exception of one, the Afghan Vampire Book Club, which is a slightly surreal science fiction take on the Snowden-esque moments of the hyper-espionage world of post 9-11, I guess, would be the one. That's the one that's the least like these other three. That was a long answer. No, 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 it was a great time, but now it's possible to be interested in the other one. kada shvati da su priče o ovim izložcima u stvari povezane i da se vežu za ranije knjige. I još jedno pitanje s kojim bih volio završiti, dakle, kada čovjek čita ovaj roman, on ima jednu zaista vrlo, vrlo važnu kvalitetu, a to je da poželite biti bolj čovjek, to se s vami mislim, i to je zaista vrlo plemenito. Mislim da knjiga samim time već ispunjava svoju svrhu, ali kako biti dobar čovjek u 21. stoljeću u ovom vremenu koje nije naklonjeno ljudima, koje nije naklonjeno humanosti, u vremenu u kojem nema empatije, u vremenu u kojem je strahovito brzo i u kojem se u stvari promiče individualnost, ne ona lijepa i dobra individualnost, nego individualnost kao gađanje propadnje. You saved that one to the end, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> I think I almost want to turn this around and say, I don't know, what, what do you think? <laughs> um, I mean, it, it's a journey, isn't it? I mean, there's, if, if anything, there's a, um, um, and I, I, you know, I get to point to the museum here because the, in between lots of short texts of people writing them is that daily desire to be a good person, um, to want to do well, to people that you've loved or and fallen out of love with, and I think, you know, that yeah, I think that the most I could say is there's a you know there's a massive journey, and that's the one that we pick up every day. Um, yeah, I, you know, that's the. Um, if anything, the you know, I one of the things that struck me that came out of the museum was I kept thinking there's got to be another 12 floors, because that daily struggle of like not only love, but I think it's in other spaces as well. How do we treat others well? Felt like it needed another. 12 floors to me. Um, and if anything, I was asking, what do they do with the rest of the exhibits that they don't use? Because I can imagine there must be you know, massive warehouses <laughs> of people who have wanted an object. And I see them mostly as people struggling to, I want to I do better. I want to come out of this being you know, a good person, a good lover, a good partner. Um, so I think there's no answer. It's, you know, it's a, the, I start the book with, you know, who I turn to in times of trouble is Leonard Cohen. I'm sure everyone speaks to him as their personal savior as I do now and then. Leonard Cohen's got a good line for just about everything there. <laughs> um, you know, a crack in everything would be the other one. That's how the light gets in. Of, um, yeah, and this museum is classic of that. There's a crack in everything, it's how the light gets in. If that, it, it's from those moments that we learn. Um, so, yes, listen to Leonard Cohen would be my answer. Mislim da ne možemo zamisliti bolji kraj konac. Hvala vam svima što ste došli. Hvala Geriju, hvala Judit, hvala Hrvoj Hefer koja je sjajno prevodila. 
I hvala Tomislavu Kuzmanoviću koji je jako, jako lijepo prevao ovu knjigu. Geri će vam naravno potpisati ako se odlučite kupiti, a ja vam ne mogu srdačnije preporučiti. Hvala još jednom.